Taylor Swift with Charlie XCX and Camilla Cabello Rogers Center, Friday, August. 3. Taylor Swift Stadium Tailored Reputation Production is arguably more of a theatrical production than it is a concert, writes Toronto star critic Ben Rayner, Jazz Mead Sidhu, special to this star, Taylor Swift Stadium Tailored Reputation Production is arguably more of a theatrical production than it is a concert, writes Toronto star critic Ben Rayner, Jazz Mead Sidhu, special to this star, Taylor Swift can indeed sing when she's not dodging trapeze artists and confetti cannons and giant snakes and other distractions that can get in the way of actually singing, writes Ben Rayner, Ben Rainer, Toronto star, two old punk rockers walk into a Taylor Swift show, and the joke. The joke's on them. They both totally, totally dig it. Article continued Bellow admittedly, this half of the equation was already in on the joke heading into Swift's Friday night gig at the Rogers Center, the first of two consecutive, sold-out Toronto touchdowns by her reputation tour extravaganza, and, oh my, is this thing the very definition of an extravaganza, in the 50,000-plus capacity baseball stadium. The amount of airplay, mine, and new romantics get round my apartment when no one's looking would likely be judged obscene and perhaps even downright disqualifying in most serious music critic circles. Anyway, my old friend and university-era roommate Rob was in town for a couple of days and, despite having a seven-year-old daughter who slots far closely than my own into the ideal, Swifty, demographic, professed complete ignorance of the entire Taylor Swift phenomenon. So I took Rob, with whom I first bonded more than 20 years ago over many enthusiastic discussions of the Clash and Sham 69 and Operation Ivy and Slayer catalogs, to see Taylor Swift at the Rogers Center on Friday night. Through a series of accidents, too, we wound up standing steps away from the first of two satellite stages set up on the stadium floor, and, apparently, from hometown pop hero Shawn Mendes, too, if subsequent social media excitement is to be believed, from whence Ms. Swift would arrive from the air by glowing chariot contraption to treat her fans to an exuberant rendition of Shake It Off, accompanied by openers Charlie XCX and Camila Cabello and solo acoustic versions of Dancing With Our Hands Tied and Out of the Woods at mid-set. We were initially worried we'd be crushed in the rush of youthful Swift admirers to this spot, but they proved a courteous and generally pint-sized lot and really not that threatening at all. And, frankly, caught in the midst of that Instagram mad frenzy, it was pretty hard to maintain any cynicism towards the expertly executed pop spectacle going on around us. Their enthusiasm was contagious. Show is a lot of fun. That's what it is, too, a show. Swift Stadium tailored reputation production is arguably more of a theatrical production than it is a concert. Imagine a supersized version of Phantom of the Opera and a spectacularly lavish drag show rolled into one and you're getting there. At times it felt like watching TV, so precisely and consistently did Swift, navigating a five-story high set veritably swarming with co-ed dancers of every conceivable body type and skin tone and, occasionally, a ceiling high inflatable Cobra R3, hit her marks all evening long just to flash a perfectly timed smile or wink for the big screen cameras. But as flashy and machine-like and plastic as it was, it was undeniably entertaining. Pop doesn't get more pro than this. The only complaint would be that we're expected to take something so inherently silly a bit too seriously for comfort. If you buy into the theme of reputation, the album, Swift is an embattled artist constantly beset by tabloid rumors and betrayals and the agony of fame, but it's rather difficult to accept her as an underdog or a victim when she's airing such complaints from a multi-million dollar stage the size of a city block to a 50,000 strong crowd deliriously screaming every single word to gorgeous and look what you made me do and you belong with me and bad blood and we are never ever getting back together back at her. Not that any of those delighted kids or their moms were analyzing it on that level, of course. Nor should they have to. Pop is about pleasure, first and foremost, and the reputation circus is long on pleasure. A few more moments of humanity, such as the aforementioned acoustic interlude or Swift's genuinely lovely, alone at the piano takes on, long live, and reputation's sweet album Closer, New Year's Day towards the end of the evening would.
have been welcome, however, as they demonstrated that she was more than just another moving part in a precision spectacle so timed to the second that even her appreciative banter with the crowd felt programmatic. Also that she could carry a tune without the aid of a guide vocal, it sounds different all of a sudden, observed Rob early on in the acoustic detour, that's because she's actually singing now, I replied. And Swift can indeed sing when she's not dodging trapeze artists and confetti cannons and giant snakes and other distractions that can get in the way of actually singing. But I guess maybe you need trapeze artists and confetti cannons and giant snakes to pull off a show of this size. Article continued below didn't think about it too much. Just give in and enjoy it. Ben Rayner is the star's music critic and based in Toronto. Follow him on Twitter, at I hate Ben